Come with me and you'll be in a world of fuel pump swapfication. Yes, I just made a word up for this segment. All right, enough with the Willy Wonka shit. So I turned on the light on my camera, but it still sucks. As you can see, I have drained my fuel cell. Uh, which we are seeing are dust particles flying across my camera. Um, that tray is just there to catch drips. I used the good old Harbor Freight. You can see I got an old Rocket Racing t-shirt for a rag. This, this shirt is actually probably from like 12 years ago. Um, doesn't even fit on me. That's a small. I can't, I can't remember the last time I fit in a small. So I used the old Harbor Freight transfer pump that you're not supposed to use for fuel for fuel. Actually works good and didn't fall apart or melt. I've used it before for fuel. Usually transmission fluid kills these, not the fuel. Ask me how I know. It depends on fluid too. So I got actually got about four gallons out of the car. Uh, there's four gallons of 91. Yes, in a pinch I had to run 91 at Cordova. So I got my fuel pump block off made. I made that at the shop. Actually, I will show you guys. I made it the man way. I said, I'm not buying one. So let's dig into my bag of shit here. I use the gasket as a template. And as you can see, I left a little material there for a nice sealing surface. And I don't know why I did that with the marker, but now I'm going to have an ugly ass fucking blue fuel pump block off on a gold block. Only I would do something that fucking retarded. So either way, I'm going to get going on this. I'll show you guys throughout what I'm going to be doing. Uh, I have to drill my frame to hold the fuel pump uh, in place. Uh, actually, something I came and checked out. So, I got a fuel pressure gauge and a bushing for one end of the... Actually, I should turn off my flash. It really picks up all the dust pixies. So, either way... I got my regulator, and one end of the regulator is going to have a gauge on it, since I'm going to end up running one line, flip my fuel log, and uh, just using my fuel log. That's all there is to it. I'm just going to end up using the fuel log. Uh, I was going to go with individual lines, but you know what? I don't think there's any pros or cons to it, really. So um, I'm going to end up going right now. There's a right here, this fuel line that you can almost make out right here. That's dash six, we're gonna be going dash eight. Dash, there's already dash eight or half inch line up to where this line terminates, which is at the bottom corner of the frame. I'm gonna go dash eight into the regulator and then dash six to my fuel log, which should be good. According to everything I've ever been read, reading, dash six, three eighths is good up to 450. I don't think we're making 450, we're probably making just a little under that um, when this thing is running good, I think hope so um i'm gonna get to it and when i get some things in there i'll show you guys what i decided to do because i still don't know what the fuck i'm doing all right guys so i got my drill bits my center punches my little 14-4 snap-on drill and i made my pilot hole for the pump so you can see my old inline filter where it was I'm trying to roughly put it in that same position so I can reuse my half inch, and still dripping motherfucker, so my half inch line. Now the other thing you got to remember is that the fuel pump has to sit lower than the bottom portion, portion of your fuel tank. So you can see my pump is going to be kind of, oh, where the fuck's that hole? Like right there. It's going to be a tad low, but not too low. We're only going to be about two inches under the frame rail. But we're definitely going to be to that point where it's going to be constantly fed unless we're low on fuel. Now the other problem is that I have a flat sump. So I have adjustable brackets. What I'm going to end up doing is I'm going to cut up a piece of uh, square tubing and put it on the back side of the fuel cell so that it's got some tilt. Just so that I don't run into that problem because I don't have a drop sump. My my fuel cell is on the floor of the trunk. I didn't cut up the floor. Uh, you can see the the undercoating has held up under here. This car was blasted down to bare metal, but I just primed it and undercoated it because I don't have pride, I guess. So, um, yeah, it was cheap too. I was 17. 
So either way, I consulted with JJ about that. JJ is the one who actually tipped me to that. I talked to him a little bit about what I was doing and he gave me some tips and I asked him about what if I was doing uh, whatever I was doing was okay and what he thought and he pretty much said it should work out. Um, so for now, that's one crucial point I figure I would show you guys real fast. So I won't get carried away here. We we're going to move on to the next step. All right, guys, so here's a deal. I was moving a fuel line. And apparently, I pinched it, so it started leaking fuel. Well, you know, it was a hard line, of course. So I think I got enough dash eight to go forward with it. I definitely got enough dash six. We were going to go dash six partway through the frame anyway, up to the fuel regulator. So no big deal. We're going to run out the dash eight AN braided line, much like this, all the way to the front as far as we can. Use our adapter from dash eight to dash six. And that dash six should be more than enough to get us up to the, um, the engine compartment. And then we should have some left to finish out our lines. If not, then... Uh, I'm going to have to buy some more braided AN, something I didn't, uh, I thought I had enough. I have more aluminum, but you know what? I have the braided. I may as well use it. Um, but then again, we'll see. I'm going to think about it for the next few minutes and see which way I want to go because the braided line would be a lot better, in my opinion, um, for this at the moment since I got it. So it'd be a lot nicer. So, Yeah. Puddle right there, tiny, but we managed to crack the line. It's aluminum, it's soft, I knew it, so. All right, guys, I'm kind of doing a hybrid system here. Where's my fucking trunk? See, that's why it's a hybrid. So, all right, let me get down here. So this is our best case scenario. I'm gonna end up using that dash eight, which you see at the front end of the frame going through that hole. I just use that to feed it. And I oblonged this hole so that the fuel line wouldn't uh, rub on the edges and it'd be a clean exit. I'm going to hook it up to the pump. That end is going to get pulled back through that and then get pulled through the C-channel portion of the frame, which my frame isn't boxed or boxed yet. So that allows me to mount it um, somewhere in that area. And then from there, we're going to go uh, hard line dash eight to the um, regulator uh, or I might go dash six if I got enough depending on how much I got again everything right now is coming down to length and where it mounts but so far this is our best case scenario um, I found out that line broke real easy because it had been rubbing in an area of the frame that I didn't know it was laying on so thank God for that kind of a mixed blessing right so right now yeah, I'm out of breath. I just ran in the house and ran back out. So um, we're running through the frame with our braided line. Best case scenario right here, safest. Now, tech tip. You see that yellow tape? I use that for two reasons. One, I can see the line in the frame because it's bright, it's yellow. And two, it covers up the end. I plugged a hole in it because I pulled it out gently with some needle nose pliers when I located it through the frame and I pulled it out. So... There's your tuck tape to uh, feed that through, and we're going to proceed. All right, guys. Uh, I got it wrapped up. Actually, this is take two on this video because after I made this video, I sent the picture to JJ, and he told me, you can't mount your fuel pressure regulator on the wall. And I should have checked because per the rule book, NHRA, whatever sanctioned body you run, they want certain things some places. You need the fuel regulator six inches away from the firewall. So... I moved it from the firewall, which you can see some holes there, to the inner wheelhouse, which is plastic. I still have to bolt it in place. I got uh, sheet metal screws in there just holding it in place because I didn't have anything small for it. Uh, but you can see it's my fuel pressure regulator, my uh, gauge running to the back of the log, the fuel filter into the main log. Then I have my fuel PSI gauge to the cowl. And uh, I guess I'll give you the whole tour de fuel. So uh, my mechanical fuel pump's still in place. I got to replace it, put my block off in there. But you can see, we went from dash eight to dash six, okay? 
And earlier in the video, I mentioned to you guys that I looped it through the frame. So you guys already got that. I'm really happy with how everything turned out. Now, my phone time is very limited right now because my battery is about to die. So I'll get to it. If you guys buy braided hoses from Summit, Jeg's, Allstate Performance, whoever it is, buy fittings for that hose. And let me explain to you why. I had a hard time getting this Earl's fitting on this Summit brand braided hose. Had I known that I was going to put it off this much, I would have went and bought it at Canola's, which I regret. I actually talked to JJ about this last week. So... If you guys buy the Jegs brand, Summit brand, whatever, buy the corresponding fittings. They're different by like fractions of cunt hairs, if you can say that. Um, it's not exactly the same. I had a really, really hard time squeezing that braided into that Earl's fitting in there, but it's the little blue guy there. But it, it it's on there now. We're good. And uh, everything's mounted there. So all that's left is to remove my mechanical pump, pull my fuel pump block off. And wire it up. I'm probably going to wire it up Sunday morning and uh, pressurize it up, check for leaks, and go from there. I did use a cutoff wheel to cut my hoses because it's easier. But I used compressed air to blow anything out on each end. And then I held it for 30 seconds. Should be good. Um... So some might frown upon that, but some guys do it that way, and I've seen it done that way. I liked it because I have a cutoff wheel. I have compressed air. So uh, I really like it. This is the nicest fuel system I have ever had. And, you know, we looped it through the frame, and it's pretty sane. Um, I'm glad I caught that broken aluminum line before it actually broke. I broke it, by the way. So um, either way, I won't bore you guys. Um, look forward to videos. Tomorrow we are hitting the track with Enron 64. Um, I'm excited. I'm nervous. I don't know what to expect. Uh, meeting up with JJ tomorrow morning at a good meeting point, and then we're going to head out to the track there. So, uh, I hope you guys enjoyed this video, and I hope you guys have enjoyed Project Enron. It's coming to a very fast close here after tomorrow. That's pretty much it. That's the curtains, man. So, um, I think I'm going to keep the 4500 stall in there. We're going to take the car out probably to the track the weekend after this one. Make some passes, see what it does. And then uh, if we feel that we could still go out and make improvements, then we'll probably take it out one last time uh, for nighttime runs because the track I wanted to run at that runs at night has an event and it's like, no, nah, I don't want to do that. You know, I uh, want to go to a strictly a test and tune where I can get a good chunk of a day in so we're gonna end up going to a different track and um, hopefully it works out we're gonna be trying tires we're gonna try and stuff so um you know share like subscribe follow me on instagram as copper cutlass if you guys want to follow on facebook i started posting up there older videos and stuff uh as uh, you can follow me as copper's garage um not copper cutlass copper's garage copper cutlass would send you to my personal page which you don't want to follow me on my personal page I'm not I'm I'm not a nice guy. I don't know what anybody's been saying, but uh <laughs> so I'll let you guys go. Um uh big thanks to JJ. I actually bounced ideas off of him about what to do with uh the fuel system. I need to take a sip, my throat's drying out. Not COVID. This is uh dogfish head, it's a sour session sour. I like craft beer. But I also like my cheap beer, if you haven't noticed, the big PBR banner back there. So, um, yeah. So, a big, big thank you to JJ for helping me out and catching that for me. And, um, you know, I, I really appreciate his help. And I talked with him about kind of how I wanted to run the fuel system. And, you know, he gave me his concerns. And then I kind of clarified it. And it seemed like we were on point together about what I was doing. And he agreed. So, either way. I've never ran a fuel system like this, and JJ, having more experience running electric fuel pumps, I bounce ideas off of him. So big, big thank you to him, and we'll let you guys go. See ya.